Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Batu. I'm just a random guy from the internet. Um, I was I was a shy uh, child when I and like making friends in the internet. It's so nice to see that from the internet you can now you know connect with so many people. And uh, today I'm gonna talk about this topic. And uh, when I talk about the free, it's more like liberal. Uh, it doesn't mean only you know you don't pay. It's usually together. You also don't pay sometimes. But even if you pay, you may not be really free to use uh, imagery and the. Very high resolution imagery is more like uh, under five meters resolution. Uh, I, I've been working in remote sensing for like around now six years and I, after this uh, event happened uh, last year, uh, I started to, again in the internet, I started to um, ask people if they need imagery uh, because the uh, event was particularly pretty large and um, you really cannot screen this area with uh, only with drone imagery or aerial uh, aircraft. Uh, satellites are pretty useful uh, in that sense, and I was thinking maybe you know we should um, facilitate satellites to uh, overcome many issues there. And this is my disclaimer. I don't know what it means. Everybody, everybody puts it, and it's, uh, it's, there's going to be some information, maybe legal implication. And I really don't know, um, you know, I really, I'm not really got the guy who gives the legal advice. Um, this is not a legal advice. I have, please do not sue me in Estonia. You know, I, I never imagined myself after getting drunk with folk music and, you know, making speech and getting sued. It's like, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. And uh, this was the imagery uh, into from, uh, there's a charter, international disaster charter I learned. Uh, so uh, many providers actually getting coordinated through this charter. And uh, you see that there are many imagery actually uh, taking, mostly after the third day of the event because there were issues with the clouds. And opt uh, getting optical imagery is not very easy with clouds. And this is particularly very high resolution imagery. It's like and, um, not, uh, also, also high imagery. I think I didn't do the full filter. Uh, but this was basically the only imagery we could uh, use as a community, uh, most thanks to Maxar. Uh, and uh, some planet data, we were able to put it on open aerial map so that the mappers can actually use uh, this imagery. Uh, not only the mappers, but everybody in uh, you know like uh, interested in this area uh, with uh, reliefs uh, could use this imagery for uh, without any restriction. Uh, how? Why do you use? Uh, maybe you don't see much here now with this screen, but. Why do you need such imagery? Uh, it's usually, you know, most of the area is already destroyed. Uh, so you, it is, it is very feasible, uh, it's very good, uh, how do you say, useful uh, to look at the imagery, not only for mapping, also to understand what's going on actually. Like for five days, we didn't know what happened even in the region and you have many people shouting in the screen on TV and, you know, trying to say something, but. Nobody really knows what happened there. And if you have an imagery, you actually have a good idea of what is happening. And it is not only for, uh, not only for the maps after the event happened, it's more like also the before, uh, what was there actually. Because I'm from Turkey, I knew the region, and I know, uh, you know, if you want to do something in this region, I know where to go and where to look. But if you are an international organization, you probably don't have any idea of, you know, what is the region. And the open street map uh, was quite uh, missing in terms of buildings, roads, and all the features. And we were both for before and for after uh, the events, we had to map the region through tasking managers. And you can use these images as layers in tasking manager and do this, uh, do mapping basically, or whatever information you get. Um, the image, the thing is that actually in Europe, most of the time you don't even have to think about it because uh, usually you have a very good national government and they already provide you a very high resolution aerial imagery. And uh, this is for, free in OpenStreetMap, you can map and you don't have to think about it. But if you switch countries, you'll see that, you know, like it's not happening at all. Uh, it's um, the, after the event, I also involved in uh, the reliefs in Morocco, Nepal, Libya, in all other countries, you have this issue. This is, for example, somewhere in Nepal, and the resolution is really, really different. 
it is not really uh, easy also to map sometimes, and you don't usually have the uh, even imagery at all. Um, currently in OpenStreetMap, uh, you can use Microsoft Bing and uh, S3 World with imagery layers. Uh, there used to be also Maxar layer, I think, uh, since last year. Uh, you can follow up this community thread. I like this also, this community um, website. There are very good discussions going on <laughs> in the community, and many people are, you know, like uh, making arguments and accusing each other. And uh, this, uh, there is a long thread about this Maxar, why it happened, why Maxar just stopped. There are many reasons, uh, as far as I understand. There, it is not only for economic, it's not only for security. Um, there are different arguments, and we really don't know, you know, like, what, what's happening and why it just stopped. Um, if you ask where is actually the very high resolution imagery, um, it's usually uh, the big major providers, uh, operators, satellite operators are Airbus, Maxar, and Planet right now. And if you also may use radar imagery, it is ISI and Umbra, what I know, Capella. Uh, these are really the big players right now. And you can check Miriam's actually talk uh, from yesterday uh, to have more idea about you know what's up uh, in the uh, space, and you can find more uh, providers. And there are also reseller platforms right now uh, trying to deal with uh, the, all the issues you may have, technical license issues, uh, and uh, so that you can reach out to the imagery uh, more easily. Uh, because it's not only for technical issue, uh, not, not only for licensing issues, uh, you also probably have many issues with uh, dealing with satellite imagery because it is really uh, not, uh, how do you say, it is not just the common thing that people uh, used to process satellite imagery. You need to know GEDAL. GEDAL. Uh, there are really, we, there are a handful of people using GEDAL, I don't know. Uh, I, was, I was one of them and I like kind of, I think I'm the only guy who understands in Turkey about GEDAL. I might be, we are around like 10 people. And so it's, it's very, very, very hard topic, like if you want to really deal with uh, satellite imagery. And uh, in International Disaster Charter, uh, you'll see that many of the providers also getting engaged here. You can also see where is actually the very high resolution imagery through them. Uh, but through the charter, you cannot reach this imagery. Uh, the charter actually is engaging with an authorized uh, local institution. And most probably, if you know the local institution, you can uh, actually reach uh, out to them. And if you are lucky, you can get the imagery. Um, data licensing issues. I really don't know, you know, this is licensing issues. Uh, uh, I've been dealing with them, and I wanted to just use uh, OpenGPT uh, rather than ChatGPT. You can use Olama. Uh, you can go Olama, my friend Orko taught me. And in Olama, uh, you can actually run many different OpenGPT models uh, on your local computer. There are also some websites uh, mm, providers, you can do that. And I just ask, you know, why can't I just buy very high resolution imagery to map regions and share with public? And the short, there, there were also, I had to tweak the results uh, in the background, but there are many licensing and privacy uh, issues. Um, even if you buy the imagery, uh, even if you pay, uh, there are restrictions on how you can use the imagery. And uh, these really, uh, this takes days and sometimes weeks to figure out uh, why do you want to use this imagery? And then people, people ask you, you need to clarify your use case. And uh, especially in case of disaster, uh, you send an email to someone and uh, you know, like uh, you get an email back uh, around like maybe five days later and you know, it's already five days passed. Um, it is really not easy during the disaster also. And uh, even if people share and they say that, ah, okay, we have open data, why don't you use it? Most of the times, even the local governments are not aware of uh, uh, their licensing because uh, there's, a, there's a good group on uh, Earth observations. Uh, and they are, I think, working on this issue specifically, uh, how satellite imagery providers are sharing data and how they should share data if you want to facilitate some use cases. And uh, the issue, what I understand, is that 
the license should really clarify uh, the use cases and there should be sufficient legal certainty uh, with the license they share. Uh, if it is insufficient and uncertain, uh, we really can know, you know if, if it is okay to use this imagery. But the problem is usually that um, because there are, uh, something happened in past and we did many things and like most of the people already maybe do not uh, trust the government and how can they know that after this event they are not getting sued and um, it is usually, it can happen and it's happening. So people should really uh, feel free to use this imagery and do all the reliefs so that they don't have any issue with the uh, wh whoever uh, the issue of whoever they uh, sue them. Um, there are some license gui gui guidance actually. Um, it is okay to maybe it is th these are again there are disclaimers and they don't they don't give legal advice, uh, but uh, they kind of uh, suggest that maybe you should release data with such licenses, mostly Creative Commons license, and some others they list. Uh, and with OpenStreetMap, uh, my friend from Contour Darafi told me about this uh, legal talk archives. Uh, there are actually many talks about this issue, how you can use image uh, to edit OpenStreetMap. Uh, and there are many issues about, you know, you should not use Google Earth, you should not use uh, Google Street View uh, imagery, blah, 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 blah. There are many, many talks. And from there, actually, you can understand, uh, okay, what happened in the past and, uh, okay, why it is now issue. Um, and there are also, like, license legal FAQ in OpenStreetMap. Uh, I didn't see a clear uh, guideline about the imagery specifically. There are many uh, answers for uh, how, you can, how you should import data to OpenStreetMap or edit, but using the imagery is, uh, so you, you find on, on some uh, places, and it's usually that you really shouldn't use any copyrighted imagery. Uh, it is, um, so sorry, it is mostly, I think, uh, in the licenses that you can uh, find already the layers, image layers in the OpenStreetMap so that it is okay. And if someone already uploaded this uh, layer to the OpenStreetMap, it's probably okay to edit the OpenStreetMap. And where is the free, very high resolution imagery? It's actually an open aerial map. Uh, we try to facilitate this platform. Uh, if you upload any imagery to the open aerial map, it's, it, it doesn't mean only satellite imagery, it's also aerial imagery. And you already declared that, oops, you already declared that it is uh, Creative Commons license in different terms. Uh, I think it should be okay to use this imagery in OpenStreetMap. Mm, I don't know. The platform is by human, humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Uh, and we did it. Uh, and there is an open aerial map layer in OpenStreetMap. So it should be okay. And uh, the, the good thing also with the platform is that they, it also solves many technical challenges. You don't have to think about this. Uh, you, just, uh, you can just download the imagery. Uh, and uh, we mostly deal with some mosaicing problems with Maxar, for example, if you directly go to try to get the imagery from Maxar. Uh, you can also get the imagery in TMS, WMS um, uh, layers, so you don't even have to actually download the imagery. And the contour is actually uh, maintaining a very good software and a very good mosaic layer, so that actually all the imagery from open aerial map is coming as a one layer. Uh, the, you can also specify the timing of uh, these, uh, you know, from which time you want to see the imagery, etc. And we are we are trying to improve that part. Uh, other than that, uh, mainly the marks of open data is the only resource. They release data, Creative Commons, non-commercial. Uh, for sure, you cannot use for commercial case, but uh, for humanitarian case, you can use this. And uh, there is this uh, Radian Earth Stack browser. I think you can kind of. Uh, understand what's going on. It is usually updated a bit, maybe one or two days after the event. Um, we try to, at the same time, we try to upload this imagery to Open Aerial Map anyways, but you can find some distinctions between Open Aerial Map and this catalog for sure. Um, Planet is also like quite responsive. They don't, re I think they don't release data in uh, Creative Commons license, but they, uh, if, you, if you email them, um, they, they have a specific terms of use uh, I'm still not sure to upload this data to OpenAirMap. 
we did at that time uh, by taking some uh, uh, confirmation. Uh, but uh, maybe you should talk to them. They are quite responsive and they, they try to help. Uh, and other than that, as I said, uh, right now in open area maps, if you want to uh, open city map, if you want to uh, check some imagery before the event mostly, you can use uh, S3 World imagery and Microsoft Bing globally, and probably your government may also facilitate this and you already have uh, aerial imagery. Other than that, Capella Space uh, and Umbra has uh, open data program. Um, radar imagery is actually the most useful after the events, in my opinion, but it is hard to interpret them. So many people actually do not use it, uh, but um, I also like sometimes Capella, you know, release data, they cannot also release from everywhere or uh, I don't know Umbra, what's going on with Umbra, they are pretty new. Uh, but Radar is actually very useful uh, imagery because you basically have something destroyed and this, uh, this is a physical feature uh, in the surface. So uh, even if government, uh, government bodies are usually, um, how do you say, they, 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 they try to use facilitate, facilitate uh, rather imagery. And in Radian Earth Foundation, and, and they are, I think, beta version of uh, new source cooperative, you can also find some uh, resources. Uh, but I didn't see any clear distinction between uh, the, you cannot easily filter uh, very high resolution imagery uh, and let's uh, see, it's usually you need to a bit uh, go through them. Um, what we do is like I just created this GitHub repository summarizing all the information and also maybe adding more specific use cases and uh, case country specific information because it's really in all events you will have a different case depending on your country because of very very complex legal uh, how do you say legal uh, agreement uh, with the providers and also the providers are making uh, agreements commercially within the region there are many, many um, entangled uh, issues, legal, politically, legally, economically. Uh, why do we need better access? It's like, um, whenever we talk with the people, especially when the disaster happened, they say that uh, we reach out to the government. Uh, we already uh, sent the data to the government. And the problem is that there is a nice definition by IFRC that Actually, disasters are serious disruptions to the functioning of a community that exceed its capacity to cope using its own resources. So this, uh, the, the community actually failed already. Like the, the government already failed, uh, in my opinion, if it is a disaster. So um, the government already cannot, you know, uh, relief uh, from the disaster. Maybe it is good to also you engage with the uh, community because uh, it is not only us, it is like many people from US, uh, like Europe and many other parts, they try to help and they, it is so hard uh, for them to engage with the government, especially during these times. And this was like the amount of work that we had to do. We had to engage like around maybe 10,000, 10,000 people uh, through OpenStreetMap and we had to map around like 2 million buildings and like pff, how many roads and it is only for the public uh, collaboration. And at the background, we also had to do many, many other things because many, many other governmental institutions actually were approaching to me to uh, find out some data. Uh, so it's only the public one. Um, for conflicts, for example, uh, the recent one, uh, I think it's worth to mention, um, also in conflicts, um, Usually you don't have access for sure. It's uh, depending on which country you are, again. Uh, and communities may uh, ask you not to actually release data. Uh, I think it was the case in Ukraine and Russia uh, war. And uh, with uh, Gaza, I think again, many people are having the issue and there's a very good analysis by uh, these professors and they, they use only Sentinel-1 radar data to uh, map the damaged buildings. Uh, I think it's important also in some conflicts to release this data because mainly, I mean, since this event started, I've been bombarded with misinformation on social media about what is going on in the region. And I think very high resolution imagery is really factual information so that uh, you avoid 
uh, misinformation, which is itself, in my opinion, a security problem. And that's basically it. We still have some uh, projects about Marmara earthquake. It's gonna happen next, <laughs> in, in our next earthquake, uh, before the earthquake, I hope. Uh, we're gonna finish some of the tasks there. Thank you. Oof, uh, thanks so much, Beto. This topic also resonates, I think, with many of us uh, as a Mexican uh, who has uh, many large earthquakes. People doesn't think, institutions doesn't think that every minute counts and there is still people under tons of material that was destroyed waiting for wind rescue. And all this bureaucracy, institutions not releasing and companies is costing so many lives that could be saved. So thanks for this presentation. Uh, so questions? We have three minutes, so maybe one question, two will be great. Yeah. Had been had been only once in open, open aerial data, just to see which kind of data was there. And I was looking for something in Germany, not in a place after a disaster. It was only drone flights done by people usually on their own uh, house or field or whatever, some very small, and then post-process with any software to make an ortho mosaic. I was kind of, I don't have a global view of a village, of a city, I just have really small spots and a bit useless. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, the project, there are also talks about open area map, the state of open area map, uh, the project uh, was not very active. Uh, the idea was that people upload their uh, drone imagery, uh, but the, uh, I think um, the thing is that there is no budget at all in the project, and uh, AWS now uh, hosting the imagery being uploaded, uh, and there are also some other issues to automatically upload the imagery, uh, so currently, basically, I need to <laughs> go back to my computer, download imagery, and upload uh, uh, like a, as, a, as, a, as a person. Um, so there are many issues to automate the uploading. Uh, and uh, maybe, you know, after resolving these things, actually it's very useful to also upload, you know, open aerial data uh, from the local governments here. But currently uh, it is really um, community driven and uh, there are some technical issues to, um, you know, speed up this process. Uh, maybe yeah, in this state of open air map, um, you can talk. Like monthly, we are uh, getting together, discuss the topics here. Uh, if you're also interested in, you know, getting involved in the open air map, uh, let us know, and maybe we can add more data. One question from Ilya. Yeah, really short one, but uh, like this talk was basically about disaster response, and disaster response is uh, like open street map. You need a map, make it yourself. Now this talk, you need imagery to trace around and the answer is open aerial map. And this is a website about collecting uh, like community drone imagery basically. So you need imagery, collect it yourself. We have mapping organizations, we have satellite imagery organizations, Maxar and everybody, and they just don't share so we have to do everything by ourselves. And I feel like the true answer should be not in technical area, but in laws, in connecting gar in garments, telling that you have to share. Do you know any advancements in that in the past couple of years, maybe? Um, I, I, I learned like even there are some discussions about whether we should have a humanitarian satellite, uh, like to operate that. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't hear much about it. Like the idea was actually that the people actually take imagery and upload. Uh, for Turkey case again, uh, I mean people just again was scared to upload the imagery uh, without permission of government. Uh, and for other regions, I don't know, like the, you should be more free uh, to add I think here. Um, and maybe if you know, actually the, it would be best the uh, local bodies already have the imagery upload here rather than they share uh, in their own services so that it's collected here and uh, you don't have to 
uh, you don't have to check different resources.